Welcome back to DVC Weekly. This is episode 16. My name is Jason Erpelding. I'm the broker of Buy and Sell DVC. And this is Scott Ferrioli. I'm the owner of DVC-Rental.com and BuyAndSellDVC.com. And today is June 2nd, uh, 2021. So your 11th month window uh, for booking at your home resort is going to be 5-2-22. And your 7th month window is going to be the new year. Uh, January 2nd, uh, 2022. Happy New Year. Yes. So I just want to mention, as in the previous video, uh, we if you have a personal DVC experience or tips that you would like to share with our audience, uh, you know, please let us know. You can, uh, you can film a video, you know, preferably like four to seven, eight minutes in length. You can share your tips whether you're a renter, whether you're a DVC owner, and you can say, hey, this is, you know, we like to stay at this resort because it's easy to this park, this is how we travel. Maybe your your 11-year-old son wants to share, you know, his favorite uh, DVC resort park, water slide. You have a grandma out there that wants to share her tips on, uh, you know, packing, uh, packing the lunches to go to Magic Kingdom with all the grandkids. Whatever it is, we'd love to... And if you've worked with buy and sell DVC or DVC dash rental, even better. It's not a requirement. Uh, if you're interested, please email me at jason at buy and sell DVC.com. I'll send you an email with some tips or tricks on a, on a video, and we'd love to have you include you in the program. And uh, I'm going to shoot it over to Scott. Scott is going to discuss uh, the adventures that you can do at Universal Studios. Now, I just want to mention before he starts that I am someone that is severe motion sickness. So this is a place that is very intimidating to me with all of its rides, all of its upside down. So I just want to mention that before I turn it over to Scott. Yeah, this is not the, the right park for Jason. Um, Universal Studios, fantastic park, just like Disney, probably geared more towards adults, teenagers, or I have a 10-year-old who's a, a big thrill junkie, loves the coasters. He loves it there too, but you know, the majority of the park is roller coasters and simulator rides. There's very little amounts of stuff to do for children. So if, if you've got a young family, Universal probably is not the way to go. But in coaster rides, they've got the new Coaster, which is the best coaster on Disney or Universal property. Fantastically done. I think it opens in eight days. By it way. opens in eight days. So you better go get in line right now if you want to be the first ones to ride the ride. But lots of great rides. Spider-Man, Hulk, Jurassic Park Adventure, Escape from Gringotts. You know, they, they've got the both Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios have um, Harry Potter sections in them. Both are really, really well done. Escape from Gringotts is on um, Universal side. We did not like Forbidden Journey. Forbidden Journey is one of the only rides to make my whole family not sick. You know, nobody ever got sick. But, you know, when, you, when your thrill junkie 10-year-old who loves coasters gets off the ride and says, can we please never go on that again? And you're like, nope, never going to do that again. It was just a little much. Um, it's a simulator ride. It's got you on like an arm and it moves the car up and down and kind of flips you all over. And it was enough to make everybody have to sit down for about 15 minutes before we could do anything else. And I think maybe, I'm not even, I can't even recall, maybe we were able to do another ride after that. We may have just gone home. I don't, I don't remember. But it was enough that we did not like the ride at all. But I mean, lots of stuff, you know, the, the mummy coaster, a couple simulators, like I mentioned, Spider-Man. Same with Transformers, very similar. Men in Black rides, fun. That, that, that's a dark ride that, again, that's one for decent for kids, Men in Black. Same with E.T., which is similar to like a, um, a Peter Pan ride, dark ride, you know, going through the air, except you're on a, on a bicycle instead of, you know, flying in a pirate ship. Probably a little better done than the Peter Pan ride. There's lots of animatronics and fun stuff going on, but very, very good park rides for both parks and Hogwarts Express, it takes you between the two parks, which is a really nice feature to have. Instead of having to walk between them, you can take the, the fun train ride, which is themed and it's a, it's a ride in itself. So I mean, very, very well done. Food at the parks, not as good as Disney. Um, a lot of times Disney, a lot of people think of Disney 
all you get is chicken nuggets and pizza, hot dogs, hamburgers, which is not the case. A lot of places do serve that, but it's not the case. Universal, it's even more the case. Most of the sit-down restaurants, that's what they're serving. There are, there are others, you know, that, that not every single place only has that, but there's a lot less food options inside the park, personally. I've eaten much more on Disney property. I find the food to be a lot better. There's still a lot of great snacks at Universal, and they're less expensive, which is really nice. Or also, truthfully, if it was up to me and I wanted to eat at one of the parks, I would... One of the great things about Universal is that the parks are right next to each other, and city, you have to walk through City Walk to get to them. So they're all connected right there, which is really nice, kind of like in Disneyland in California. You've got both parks there, and you've got downtown Disney. So, I mean, it's all very nicely located. I would leave the parks and, and go eat outside right there at City Walk. A lot of great restaurants, Bubba Gump, Margaritaville, Toothsome Chocolate Emporium. I know we spoke about this before. Jason's, I think he and his family really like that. And what's really good is that if you go to, um, if you go to Universal after six o'clock, you don't have to pay for parking. So if you're going just to go for dinner, you know, you don't, you don't want to pay $25 to, to park to go to dinner. So after six o'clock, you can head there. Any of the restaurants, it's going to be all open for you. Fun stuff to walk around and check out too. So yeah, it might have been good for your family just to go there. Go to Voodoo Donuts, really good uh, donut shop there. But the, I, I, I liked Everglazed at Disney Springs a little bit better. Also a little more expensive, but Voodoo Donuts is fun too. But lots of really cool stuff at Universal. Um, again, very, very different park than Disney. But. Like, I just, like, when I talk to families that are going to Universal, it's typically they're going there because they have the teenage, you know, daughters, teenage sons. It's not typically, you know, like the four to six year olds that are going to Correct. Universal. Correct. If you're bringing a four to six year old, there's really not much for them to do. I mean, like, um, Islands of Adventure has like a Seuss land, Seuss, I think it's called Seuss Landing, where there's like, two rides, three rides. There's th technically, there's three rides there, but there's not a lot of stuff for little kids to do there. I mean, again, very good park. I have a friend who has, a, I'm th wondering if she could be watching this. If you are, hi, Kimmy. I know she loves Universal, and she has a bunch of little kids, and she used to bring them all the time. I know they used to have great character interaction with the kids, especially in Seuss Land. they got the Grinch, and they've got like all, all their character, all, the, all like the Dr. Seuss characters, the cat in the hat and stuff. And they always got fantastic attention from them. So maybe that, that's a great option for kids as well. But personally, if it was up to me and I was spending, you know, Disney prices to go to a park, I, I wouldn't take my kids there. It's just not worth it. There's not enough for them to do. But if you're into the coasters. If you're into the coasters, this is the park for you. That was my coaster that signal, apparently. I, I, I like that. I'm I, don't know what, I don't know where that If you're into coasters. <laughs> But yeah, this, this is the part for you if you're into coasters and or simulator rides. Definitely more intense. VelociCoaster is absolutely fantastic. Now, now you did mention something earlier before we started. Um, I mean, so let's say someone did go there that does have motion sickness. Do you, do you recommend like they could take something before they go or? I mean, Just if, not if, 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 if you know that you have motion sickness, Take something. I mean, go get yourself bonine or dramamine or something to help with seasickness, motion sickness. I mean, typically, when I go to Disney, I don't take anything. When I go to Universal, I typically take a, a, a dramamine before I go. Or meclizine is the, you know, because I'm a doctor, meclizine is the uh, generic term for this sickness stuff. I, I, I take something. I'll, I'll give my little guy who's a coaster junkie one of those as well. I, you know, if you... If you're prepared for it, it might be a little bit better for you. But again, if you're somebody who's you know used to getting sick or you know you get motion sick easily, I'm not sure how much a, a meclizine or whatever is going to really help you. But take one; it, it, it can't hurt. But please use responsibly, of course. Yes, exactly. Be responsible. <laughs> Anything else you want to add to the? So I guess my question is, if what is the one roller coaster or ride that they must do if they go there? Right now, for roller coaster. Definitely VelociCoaster. I mean, again, we, we did it on an AP preview a couple weeks ago. It was a fantastic ride. I wish there were more animatronics on it. Unless they've changed something, it was mostly just uh, static Velociraptors just sitting there not moving as you're going through it. Where Hagrid's, you have the animatronics on there, which really adds to it. I, I mean, it's a fantastic coaster. I would definitely choose that one. I just I wish they'd done something else with it. There's one point where you go down and you're kind of upside down facing the water. And there, it seems like they're probably going to make the whole area more of a Jurassic World area instead of Jurassic Park. Like they've just, we were there, they have a Jurassic World uh, store. 
that hasn't opened yet, but it's, it's going to be a feature store there. And I don't know, you're going towards the water. Why they don't do something with the Mosasaurus, something that kind of moves or pops up or smoke comes up towards the water, something sprays. So you think that like the Mosasaurus could be coming. coming. I think they just kind of like missed the mark a little bit with stuff like that, with not having any animatronics or not doing anything as you go towards the water. I mean, it's, but I mean, again, even if it was just a Mosasaurus that was just sitting there, not moving, just something where you go towards it and you're like, oh my God, there it is, and have some smoke coming around it, you know, picture the Yeti with some flashing on it, you know, you think it's moving, have something there, but I mean, again, Fantastic Coaster, that, that, that's the ride. And, I, and, I, and that's, I forget, Universal Studios is divided up into... Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. And the Velocicoaster is in... Velocicoaster is in Islands of Adventure. Okay. So when you... So admission works like you pick one or the other if you're just going to one? You can buy a one-day, one-park ticket, or you can buy a ticket that will allow you into both parks. Okay. And then for, they also have a Volcano Bay, which is their uh, water park option as well, which you can buy a ticket that will get you into all of those as well. Personally, I have not been there yet, but that's an option as well. Okay. And uh, now we're going to go into your food of the week. Come here, I'm going to eat you. Get in my belly. So for the food of the week, I'm staying at Universal Studios. Uh, for the first time, we tried out the San Francisco Candy Factory. Um, kind of, It's kind of on the way to the Harry Potter land. You go through San Francisco area. And... Really, really some nice options in there. L- little sweets. We got the Butterfinger Brownie. So you, you got a brownie with Butterfinger kind of crushed up in the brownie itself. And we also got the M&M S'mores. So picture a s'more where you've got the two graham crackers, marshmallow in the middle, and then the whole thing is covered with a chocolate coating and then small uh, M&Ms on top. Both of these, I want to point out, were $4.50, which compared to Disney's prices, especially for the brownie, because it's a nice thick size brownie, that's a pretty good deal. If it was Disney, if it was Disney, it'd probably six dollars or so. And then you get ten percent discount for being an annual pass holder. At least we do. Um, again, the higher levels you get up to twenty percent discount. But the Butterfinger brownie, I thought was really really good. I thought it was fudgy, fantastic. My wife thought it was a little more cakey. I'm I'm not sure, but I gave it an eight point one. Thought it was really really good. As for the s'mores, I think my just. My expectations were too high on it. You know, when you think about it, you know, when you picture a s'more in your head, you, you picture yourself going outside and you're melting the marshmallow and it's gooey and it's amazing. When you, when you dissect this and you picture just having you know, two graham crackers, an uncooked marshmallow, and just covered in chocolate, you go, oh, that's not as exciting as you picture when you think s'mores. And that's how we felt. I mean, it was, it was okay. We, I gave it a 4.2. I mean, it's still good. It's not bad, but you know, I would never get it again for the same exact price. I mean, this this Butterfinger brownie just blew it out of the water. So I mean, I'd, I'd stick with that. So just to give people a question here, because not everyone may know where everything's located in uh, Central Florida. This is just really a guesstimate on your end. Let's say someone's staying at Old Key West, uh-huh. and a father and teenage son want to go to Universal for the day. They don't have a car with them. They didn't run a car. And they want to take an Uber or a Lyft. Do you have an idea on like what the approximate cost is going to be on that, or not really? I, I can tell you it's probably about a fifteen-minute ride. Okay. I would I would guess that an Uber is probably going to run you around ballpark twenty-five dollars. I mean, again, I've because miles-wise, it's not really that no, far. No, it's, it's, it's not that far. It's just yeah, it just takes a little while to get there sometimes. But so, yeah, maybe twenty-five dollar ride. So I mean, it's not. I mean, it's definitely an option. It's not like we're talking, you know, Disney's. And Universal are extreme distances apart. I mean, oh no, they're, they're all relatively close. Same with Sea World; they're all within you know fifteen, ten minutes of each other. But really nice option to have with Universal. I mean, that's if you if you're a coaster guy, a, a, a thrill seeker, this park is better for you. If you've got younger kids, I mean, I personally would not bring them to the park. I mean, one one day, you know, you'll get there. But I mean, Disney is kind of built for everybody, and this, you know, this coast is there that your kids won't qualify for, you know, height wise as well. But there's lots of family friendly stuff. Universal really doesn't have much on the family friendly side, but for thrill rides, it's definitely ahead of Disney. And I'm sorry, what were the food review scores on that? Butterfinger Brownie got a strong 8.1. I would get that again, and I would get that right now because I'm getting kind of hungry. The s'mores, I would push off to you and let you eat the s'mores, which got a 4.2. I'll take it. So now I'm just going to discuss a, a couple of other options that are here in Central Florida. 
and maybe this is for the the non thrill seekers. I don't know, but uh, I was just going to discuss Gatorland. So uh, Gatorland is another option where, again, it's if you if you're familiar with going from the airport to Disney, most likely you're going to take 417. Gatorland is off of 417 on Orange Blossom Trail, and my family we used I have two sons, uh, 11 and nine year old now. We used to be pass holders for Gatorland. A little bit more uh, tame there with the not the thrill rides. I hope you're on point with Gatorland because we got a, you know our buddy Chris Malik from WW Review. He's a huge Gatorland fan, so if you see anything wrong, he's going to be yelling at the screen right now. Oh, so really? I, I hope I hope you're good to go with Gatorland because I've never been there. I, I want to go sometime, but I've never been to Gatorland. So so I bring will, it. So just I mean to give you an idea, I mean it's, it's not a you know it's definitely not the size of any of the Disney parks or the Universal parks. It's a smaller park, but when you go buy it, like in the the line to get in is generally always a big line. I don't know if that has to do with their system of getting people in, but there's always a, a good size uh, line to get in. But I mean, if you have kids, I mean, there's they have you know different stuff they do with the gators, you know, feeding the gators, you know, there's snakes there, uh, there's wrestling the gators. And now my mind, now they even have more activities there. My mind just drew a blank. When you're in the, when you go down the rope thing. I zip get, line? Zip line, thank you. So they even have a zip line option there now. Over the gators? No, 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 no. And uh, so, I mean, I mean, it's just, especially like, I mean, I have family that lives in Iowa, you know, so, you know, like. Not a lot of zip line in Iowa? So, well, there's not, and there's not a lot not of. Not gators? There's not gators. So it's like. You know, they get to come in a controlled environment. They get to see the gators. They get to see all these other things. And, you know, it's it's very inexpensive to get in there. And, uh, I mean, it's just, I mean, and especially if you have, you know, kids under 10, you know, there's not a lot of walking around. It's, it's, it's very family, kid-friendly. And then I was just going to mention, because if you go out to uh, um, Gatorland, as you get, then you go into Lake Toho Capilla. Most people just call it Lake Toho. Um, it's a very. I know nothing about this. So uh, it's probably the number one, you know, bass fishing lake Ooh. in Orlando. Of course, there's bass fishing guides at Disney. That there's plenty of options at Disney for bass fishing. You can, you know, hire, you know, at Bay Lake Tower, wherever the case may be. I'm actually going to be doing that in about a month from now. Oh, I'm nice. Doing the bass fishing yeah, with the, with the Ed Cock guys and the uh, WW Review is going to be coming down. One of the things we're going to be doing is a bass fishing trip in the lake. So I'll be, I can tell you how that goes eventually. But Perfect. Hopefully so you, I don't get seasick. So you have those options. And then if, I mean, if you really want it, you can go to Lake Toho and there's bass fishing guides that will take you out. And, you know, I mean, in Lake Toho has bass that are, you know, there's all sorts of vegetation there. So there's, you know, people catching, you know, eight to 10 pound bass on a regular basis. A lot of the guys, of course, use, uh, you know, live shiners, but, you know, you can fish. Hot dogs? On, what? Hot dogs? Yeah, so you can use hot dogs, yeah. artificial. Um, and then, of course, if you want to go to a beach, you know, there you have people that'll go, you know, here in Orlando, they'll go to Clearwater or they'll go to Cocoa Beach. It's, again, it's another thing where... Like, you know, I go back to family from Iowa. They come here, you know, they want to see a beach, even if it's only for four hours. They're going to drive to Cocoa or they're going to drive to Clearwater. And uh, so, you, I mean, you really have, I mean, this episode, you really have all sorts of, you know, if you, let's say we have people that we sponsor the Dib. I was just going to bring it up, yep. You have people coming from the UK that may be coming here for anywhere from two to three weeks. So they're looking to, you know, kind of touch on everything. So, I mean, you can go to, you know, do all sorts of stuff at Disney. You can go to Universal, experience all those thrill rides. You have a family with little kids. You can go to Gatorland. You can go bass fishing. You can go to the beach. I mean. I haven't done these things. Have you done, have you done any of the airboat rides? So my wife has. Okay. And I've been on Lake Toe. So the, with the airboat rides, a couple of things. Number one, they're extremely loud. But they do give you the ear coverings, but you're gonna see you're gonna see gators. I mean, they. I mean, there's pretty much there's gators everywhere in uh, Florida, of course. 
um, but it's in a controlled environment. Look at, watch out for gators. <laughs> but uh, I personally have not been on the airboat ride, but yes, that's, I, I was going to mention that. So again, at Lake Toho, that's another place where you can do airboat rides. And, and again, there's, you can do that with kids, you know, two years, I mean, they're, they're going to wear a life vest and everything. And you have the ear protection, but you're going to experience, you know, something that, I mean, it's like, uh, well, I, you, know, if you want to call it real Florida, whatever the case may be. It's, it's going to be, uh, you're going to see nature and it's, it's I, need, I, need, I need to expand a little bit. I, I've been living here for coming up on five years. The only beach I've gone to is Vero Beach. I haven't, I haven't done Gatorland. I haven't done airboat rides. I haven't gone fishing since I've been down here. I oh, haven't gone to regular go beach besides Vero. I mean, I, there's a lot of stuff I do. But it sounds like you're busy with your, uh, the roller coaster junkie. Like. Yeah, the roller coaster junkie just wants to do coasters. He won't let me go anywhere else. <laughs> I, I did take him uh, mini golfing the other day. Lo- he loves mini golf too, so let's go mini golfing. But I mean, yeah, there's, there's a lot of. As Jason pointed out, there's a lot of stuff to do here. It's, it's not just Disney. I mean, that's the focus that everything kind of you know everybody everything revolves around Disney. But then you've got the Universal and your Sea World, your bigger stuff. And then after that, there's a lot of other stuff. And like you mentioned, like if you're coming down here for a couple of weeks, you know, you're o- overseas. You're going to be here. There's a lot of fun stuff to do that you know we haven't even really touched on that you need to look into though, and I, I need to personally look into it as well. I mean, and I mean, again, it's 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 really it's all about making memories. I mean, so I mean, if if you're like in the last episode, we talked about the ale house. So like, if you're worried, you know, if your husband's worried that he's gonna miss the Ravens game, and then you're you know you have your teenage son, well, you know your your husband and your teenage son, they can go to Universal Studios, ride the Velasco coaster, they can go to Lake Toho, catch a bass, they can catch a bass on Disney. I mean, there's just, there's like a lot of times people say, oh, you know, we've been to Magic Kingdom, we've done this. There's like, there's a whole range of activities that you can do in, you know, a relatively small area of space here. So I I, I, I need to branch out. I I say this in all honesty, I really do, because I I barely go 15 miles out of my the, the circumference of my house. I, I barely go anywhere. It's it's mostly just you know sitting you know we're sitting here working and getting food, going to Disney or Universal, or haven't gone to Sea World in a little while. But I mean, we barely we barely get out. And I was going, there's, I really need to take advantage of some of this. And I got to go do an airboat ride. I definitely got to do Gatorland. So that that seems like a lot of fun, and we got to do that. So uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. And again, if you want to share any personal experiences, please email me, jason at buyandselldvc.com. I'll send you some further details on some tips or tricks that you can do when you shoot the video. Uh, We appreciate you watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share it with others. We appreciate it. All I can think of is that Right now, I, I know people are watching this. I know my buddy Jeremy Murray is watching this. He's a big fisherman. He said, I have to come up visit him. I think he's got some crazy bass fishing right by his house. Malik's yelling at us about Gatorland. So, you know, Jeremy, Chris, anybody wants to send a video about Gatorland or send, send a video about the fishing by you or send a video of anything, hit up Jason. You know, we'll, we'll gladly include you guys. And we appreciate all of you. And thank you very much for watching. Thank you.